wait, there I am. Hello, folks. Welcome back. For I am the one, the... Wait a second. This shirt's feeling bigger. Oh, wow. I might be losing weight for a change. Finally losing all that COVID-19 tonnage I put on. At least trying. Oh, wait. Enough about that. Hello, folks. Welcome back. For I am the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. Again, you know, it has to be a W. This is shirt is freaking big. You know... Weird. Yeah, that or... I haven't watched this in a while. But again, I'm wearing my Macho Man shirt so you know it's a WWE show. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do probably the week later. Oh, that collar got soft, too. That's weird. Oh, well. I'm here to talk about some Monday Night Raw and Cover Roll. Yes, sir. It's always good talking to you. You, sir. Definitely that luchador on a forklift. I forget what I said, but you responded to it by saying something somewhat intelligent. I forget if it was... Wait, aren't they gone now? Oh, no. Yeah. Or was it about the Jeff Hardy feud? Uh, the Hardy, Jeff Hardy and Elias feud. I don't know. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's, about how, let's talk about how Monday Night Raw and it starts... It's time to play the game. I, I, I don't know. I like, I miss Lemmy's intro. It's time to play the game. He is the game. This is how he takes it. I don't know. Lemmy was the best. R.I.P. Lemmy. Motorhead was also really good. Especially when it came to the Triple H theme. Uh, Triple H. The boss shows up. Paul Vec shows up. Um, to that, he talks a little bit about what happened. Randy Orton shows up. <laughs> Triple H calls him a prick. Oh, wow. Using creative language there. Wow, that's just the peppery. And then Randy Orton says, Well, I guess Steph still has your balls in her purse. Oh! Yeah, so of course that's going to lead to a fight. And we'll see, we'll see that happen a little bit later. Uh, and then we have the Charlotte and Ric Flair. Woo! Recap. And I, I might be doing a lot of wooing, so I might have to put that microphone that way. So you go, woo, 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 hi, styling, woo. Yes. I'll, I'll adjust that later. Uh, so first match we had, we had Charlotte Flair taking on Lacey Evans. Uh, this was, uh, this was, it was actually pretty good. Um, I always get nervous when I see Lacey Evans, mainly because I don't know if we're going to get Good Lacey Evans, or if we're going to get NXT, boo, Sonya Deville Lacey Evans. So it's always hard to tell. Uh, match starts off. Uh, Charlotte backs Lacey into the corner, the tie-up. Uh, Charlotte, again, goes for a small package, the big shoulder tackle by Charlotte. And, woo, those Ric Flair chops. Woo! Uh, then goes into the head scissors, and then she did, like, the flippy figure four headlock, which was pretty cool. Figure four, remember, it's, I know in collegiate wrestling, you can 
Says you're the head, not figure four. Can you figure for the head? Hey, you figure for the head, not scissor the head. You can scissor the body, but not figure for the body. So yeah, so she had uh, Lacey Evans in, in a figure four leg lock. If you don't know what that means, just go watch wrestling about that. Um, and then kind of flips her around. That was pretty neat. And then now she starts doing the typical flare thing by going after the knee. Again, very flarish. Um, however, Ric Flair, woo, high styling, profiling, kiss stealing, blonde woman, mommy grabbing, woo. Ric Flair shows up. The distraction, of course, that distracts Charlotte Flair, Lacey Evans, and does like that super tall Bronco Buster. That's good. I mean, if Lacey Evans is going to do moves where. They don't necessarily have the most impact. You're uh, like honestly, the risk of injuring probably herself is greater doing the Bronco Buster, like X Pac when when he tore his asshole. I don't even know how that's possible, but whatever. Um, so I mean, that's not gonna hurt Charlotte or whatever. wasn't There wasn't anything too scary or dangerous. It was a pretty basic match from Lacey Evans. If you keep Lacey Evans in a really basic match and kind of walk her through things. He's actually pretty good. Very basic. Uh, Charlotte hit an exploder suplex and a kip hop. However, Ric Flair, woo! When all Ric Flair tripped Charlotte, woo! Meet your, <laughs> meet your, meet your new mommy, Charlotte. And then walks off with Lacey Evans to the hotel room. Woo! 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 It was a woo! Tube of a time. Uh, this actually was a decent match. It, was, it continues the story between Charlotte and Lacey Evans. I don't know what payoffs that, that's going to have, though. Uh, Ric Flair is still around. Power to Ric Flair. You know what? Solid cheeseburger match. Then there, again, you have Lacey and Ric Flair. Ric Flair has Lacey's arm. Jeez. Woo! Uh, then Miz and Morrison are talking to Sheamus and Keith Lee. Got a little promo there. Then we have Jeff Hardy versus Elias again. They really need to end this feud. This this is this is not fun. It's like four months old. It's stale. It's not good. And I never realized that this is actually off center. That's odd. Hmm. Woo! Um, yeah, so it starts off Jeff Hardy versus uh, Jackson Riker. Elias gets involved really quick. That was a quick match. It it had to take less than a minute. It had to take like probably one minute at most because I was making a microwave meal. I already cooked it for the three minutes during their intro. Uh, remember, with that you have to stir it up, let cook it for another minute. By the time the microwave went off, I'm like, huh? Jackson Riker's not in the ring anymore? What's up with that? Yeah, Jackson Riker won that match. Ah, that's a piece of toast. So then Jeff Hardy has to face Elias. Um, this is okay. It's, it, it's, it's gone its natural course. They should have en ended it with the... Um, Full metal, full metal concert match, or the Symphony of Destruction match, whatever they called it. So it was okay. It starts off with a trade of blows. Jeff Hardy does his combo, uh, goes for the twist of fate. Now that didn't happen. Elias hits an attitude adjustment on Jeff Hardy. Remember, John Cena's not here anymore, so it's not really a finisher. Um, Hardy, uh, oh, oh no, this was the whisper in the wind. That looked awful. I hate to tell you, Jeff Hardy, you're getting old. The body's not going to do certain things anymore. You have to move on a little bit. I, I've somewhat accepted that. And the fact that after fishing trips, I do need a day off. If I'm going to do something really strenuous, I need to say, tranquilo. I can't go all night watching pro wrestling and then be expected to work the next day. Not happening. Um... If I play a pickup basketball game, which I'm terrible at, 
I have to realize that, you know what, I actually have to stretch out afterwards. And I might have to get the bag of frozen peas out and, and put it on my knee. It's, it's just a fact of life. You're getting old. You're not 25-year-old Jeff Hardy who can flip, flip you do stuff. In this regard, Matt's actually, Matt Hardy's taking the smarter route. He's like, I'm going to be a manager. Every so often I'll do something. But I'm not doing no twist of fate, though. And again, Jeff Hardy still does a swanton. So, yeah. You know that neck and upper and shoulder area of his, this whole area up here is, has to be, well, yeah, in the back area, has to be all kinds of jacked up. I don't even want to be his chiropractor because I don't think I could fix anything. But um, that just looked terrible. And, and that's what cover roll says. Like, yeah, it looked good 20 years ago. Yeah, or it looked good 10 years ago. That was 10 years ago. We get old. Father time is undefeated, folks. Can't. That's the only thing I can say about that. But um, that just looked terrible. Then he had a twist of fate and a swanton. The cup for it. He beat Elias again. Elias and yells at Jackson Riker. Why, why, why didn't you help me? Riker. I don't know. I just want that to be over. It was a ham sandwich match. Then we had Sheamus and Keith Lee taking on the Miz and Morrison. I'll tell you what, though. That first hour went by pretty quick. And then it hit time war with when Morrison's slow-mo action came into play. Yeah, because that's what it felt like for the middle hour. And then the last hour went by pretty quickly, except for that one match. But we'll get to... Yeah, actually, it did go by pretty quickly. And so Sheamus and Keith Lee taking on Mr. Morrison. This was actually a really fun match to watch. Uh, for the most part, Sheamus and Lee, Keith Lee, were on the same page. Uh, starts off with, <laughs> I refuse to call him John Morrison, Johnny Mundo. And also, Johnny Mundo really hit his stride in, in Lucha Underground. I miss Johnny Mundo. Uh, Mundo's definitely faster. Sheamus is definitely the stronger too. Good classic wrestling to start the match off. I can't complain about that. It was a tag team continuity between Lee and, and Keith Lee and Sheamus, which is good to see. Although WWE, ever since they kind of hit that gold with the whole uh, Sheamus and Cesaro with the bar getting rivals to become tag teams, they're trying to repeat that. And if they keep on doing that, again, I can see it. So this is the second time WWE's done it. They did it with uh, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. Did a little bit with Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro. Uh, they're doing it again. The thing is, it's going to get old because they're just redoing the same story or at least the same concept. A, a little tweak here and there, but it's the same thing over and over and over again. So you're just like saying, well, gee, I saw this three years ago. I know what's going to happen. Bah. So WWE does have to be careful about that. Uh, when the Miz tags in, uh, he, he gets sent to the outside. Keith Lee Grill presses Johnny Mundo onto the Miz on the outside. That was amazing. Uh, Sheamus, again, from the apron, dove on them. Again, you have this real continuity between Sheamus and Keith Lee. Maybe Keith Lee will go out for a pint with Sheamus. Who knows? Mundo gets smart. He's like, yeah, he starts to attack the legs of Keith Lee. Very smart. Um, the kicks and the shots too with the chop blocks. <laughs> and then he got bounced in the corner so hard the ropes broke. <laughs> and Keith Lee was like, oh shit. You can tell. Every, like the referee was like, huh? What? And then they went to break. Because they had to fix, they actually had to fix the ropes. That's pretty cool. I know they do tie those turnbuckles tight, and if they do, if you do hit it the wrong way, um, it's it's not really buckled in. It's kind of in with a hook. So if you hit it probably the wrong way, knock the hook out, and then of course the elastic makes makes the the uh, rope makes it come off. It's it's not that hard of a fix. They're just like holy. The <laughs> Keely had the look of pure surprise. That was a shoot, folks. 
So yeah, that was actually pretty cool to see. He, he got pounced so hard in the corner that the ropes broke. That's pretty cool. That's going to make the highlight film. Uh, Miz, after coming the, after from the break and after they fixed the ropes, is obviously in control. Mundo, again, he's so quick that the alligator roll gets Sheamus back into his corner. The Miz um, had the big kick. Uh, however, then he eats, eats a freaking headbutt. Which looked absolutely vicious. And then Sheamus came in. Irish first backbreaker. The shoulder tackles again, the standing backdrop. I don't even know how you do that. I don't know how you just pick up a guy and say, toss him like that. I can understand running because at least you have some some forward momentum. But just a standing backdrop. Ouch. The Miz got tossed into Morrison again. Morrison ate a tour of the islands. Sheamus hit the bro kick. And then, yeah, so they won. This was actually really good. Solid cheeseburger match. And we have Triple H. Um, he's he accepts the, the fight offer. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens at the end of the night there. Then come back and like, whoa, Keith Lee and, and Sheamus are fighting now. They have their match. Who knows? Maybe this uh, this is how they, they, they bond. Who knows? Um, Sheamus just gets beat down for the most part by Keith Lee. Keith Lee had a big belly to belly. That was good. Uh, Sheamus uh, into corner. He gets the knee up. Now he, now he gets to work over the arm of Keith Lee. Uh, then Sheamus then goes to the top rope. Lee with a big chops knocks him down. This, this was just kind of clunky. This is like, okay, we need a filler match because we've timed this terribly wrong. Then there was a... Uh, when, so when Sheamus got up, again, he, he, kicked off, he kicked Lee off. Because you're like terrified that the ropes, that something else is going to break. So then uh, Sheamus does a flying clothesline on to Lee. Then he goes for the Judo Katami again, working on the arm. Um, eventually he has... Sheamus puts Keith Lee into a triangle choke. Keith Lee just kind of deadlifts power bombs and then turns that into a spirit bomb. Keith Lee wins. Okay, it was a confusing match. It was, it was quick. Simple. Um, showed off really the strength of both wrestlers. Then brothers don't fist bump. Brothers hug. They hugged it out. And it was a ham sandwich of a match. Then we have the whole Goldberg and Drew McIntyre recap. Matt Riddell's back there with the Lucha House Party. That's okay. Uh, Xavier Wood then takes on T-Bar. And coming into this match, I'm like, wow, maybe the only people Retribution can beat up is Ricochet. But Ricochet's out. Um, Xavier Woods is obviously a little bit quick. Actually, not as quick as, just as quick as T-Bar is. Or T-Bar's as quick as Xavier Woods. T-Bar, of course, um, feast your eyes. Donovan Dijakovic is obviously bigger and stronger. Again, he's too strong for Xavier. Xavier tries to kick. When we try that, then he eats a clothesline. Uh, again, classic kind of wrenching the neck back. Kind of that chin lock way. Xavier hits a missile drop kick. I guess T-Bar out of the ring. Then I guess T-Bar does his eyes wide shut move. Yeah. That was it. T-Bar wins. Really a filler match. It was a ham sandwich of a match. Then Randy Norton learns of, of uh, Triple A's answer. Yeah, he'll meet him down in the ring. Then we have Matt Riddle taking on Bobby Lashley. Again, this is because last week the ref didn't see Matt Riddle tap. This actually felt a little bit like a shoot fight. Bobby Lashley went right after Matt Riddle. And I don't know if, if, he got, if, if uh, Riddle got caught with something or if he bit his lip, but he started to bleed from the mouth. Unlike what happened to Randy Orton, I think... That's the, I don't even know it's not the myth, because there is a crowd there. But I know they did that with Sasha Banks, or they kind of redid it, or they skipped or they skipped it a little bit. Yeah, I'll, we'll get to that. The, the Matt Riddell thing looked like legit. It looked, it looked like he bit his lip or something, because there was blood coming from his mouth. 
I'm sh I'm sure wrestlers have been their lips so often. And again, if you ever bite bite your lip, you realize like it just bleeds like for like twenty seconds profusely, and then like stops. It's not bad. I mean, it's, it's not like an any Guerrero blood job thing. So Bobby just jumps, <laughs> jumps, Matt Riddell, and tosses him across the ring. Lashley event on the outside gets sent to the post. He tried to do that um, fireman's post thing. Uh, Riddell hit a second rope twist, twisting salt. Um, however, Matt Riddell when he tried the second rope move, he got caught. He just got caught. He got caught, picked up, and slammed and put into the hurt lock. Bobby Lashley's not messing around. That's good to see. You clearly see it's like, yeah, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show the ref that you're tapping. We're not doing this nonsense again. It's like, ref, you will see this. Bobby Lashley won. Pretty convincing match. A good cheeseburger match. Then Matt Riddell, for some reason, calls out MVP. That was weird. Um, so it was Matt Riddell versus MVP. MVPs are in dress shoes. Uh, Matt, for the Riddle, for the most part, beats up MVP. He does like the spinal tap onto him. Lashley comes in. Lashley's on the outside. Yeah, Riddle gives him a kick that that raises the ire of Bobby Lashley. He comes in the ring, and <laughs> so Matt Riddle wins. He beats MVP. But yeah, MVP just did like a solid punt to him. In dress shoes. Those were not wrestling shoes. Those were dress shoes. I wonder if a lot of this was written, was was done on the... A lot of the show felt like it was done on the fly. This match was okay. It was a ham sandwich, though. Then we have AJ Styles taking on Drew Gulak. Again, this is to see if Drew Gulak is actually allowed in the Royal Rumble. Or, who knows, maybe Drew Gulak will have the luxury of starting first. Or probably come in third. Who knows, we'll see. Uh, it was a good physical start to the match. Again, Drew Gulak's a good worker. Chikara. 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 I like a Chika almost a Chikara match. Except for in WWE style. Uh, eventually, Drew got stuck in the electric chair position. Tried to roll through. Uh, did a black backslide to AJ again trying to get his way in. However, AJ said, no, no, no. I'm done with that. Pele kicked Drew Gulak, hit the forearm shiver, which actually knocked, uh, yeah, the forearm shiver, and then he, then against the ropes, Drew Gulak, he tried to kick him, AJ caught the boot, threw Drew over the top, remember, that's the way that Drew Gulak would be eliminated, and then you just get this, like, vision of Omas's foot which is huge in comparison to Drew Gulak's entire head. And just a camera angle that pans up makes him look like a giant. Almost like, oh, I have a picture of Bobby Tunde. And, and he just looks huge. And I'll show that next time. I forget. Yeah, my phone's in the other room. Actually, my phone's right. All right, think about it. Let's see here. Where is Bobby Tunde on my phone? Because... He just looks like a giant, even compared to me. Let's see here. No, no. No, cute pictures, but no. That was Tony Atlas. Let's see, your fat bastard. Oh, yeah, see, even compared to me, Bobby Tony looks absolutely huge. And it's just that whole camera an angle thing. But, yeah, you have to know how to work the camera angles a little bit. Then, yeah, uh... Drew looks absolutely terrified, gets in the ring, and eats a phenomenal form. AJ saw his win, as he should. It was pretty good, though. Cheeseburger match. Then we had a Gold Goldberg introspective. Yeah, I could care less about that. Then it was Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax taking on Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. Shayna again, <laughs> she goes after the arm. Mandy Rose, smart. Got that. Uh, Dana Brooke. Uh, eventually, Rose get, gets her licks in. Nia Jax tags herself in. Dana Brooke gets tossed by Nia Jax. Eventually, she counters with a jawbreaker. Rose then takes it to Shayna Baszler, kind of getting her measure of revenge for Shayna trying to break her arm. 
Mandy Rose gets yeah, Mandy Rose gets back in. Or was it Dana Brooke? I forget. Both of them look so similar. Big, booby, blonde-haired women. Perfect description. They're very similar color palette, too. Uh, Shannon Baszler tags herself in as Nia Jax is going to climb to the ropes do a big splash. Puts the uh, Carafuna clutch, rear naked choke onto one of them. Whoever was tapped out, Nia Jax looks disappointed she didn't get to splash anyone. Oh well, it is what it was. It was okay. Ham sandwich of a match. And then we just have a fight. Uh, Triple H versus Randy Orton. Triple uh, Jean, uh, uh, Paul Levesque comes down, kind of street clothes, t-shirt, Randy Orton's in wrestling gear. It's a brawl. Orton gets his shots in, then uh, Triple H gets his shots in. I do miss the, the Motorhead entrance for Triple H. That's still the best Triple H entrance. Um, out in the back, it looks it looked like Randy Orton got a nasty cut on his cheek. I don't know if it was like a surface thing, because in like the one shot, and I don't know if they did the magic of camera editing, or if we really could clean it up. Because again, you cut your cheek, like you pop a pimple, you could have sworn like you you like it looks like you severed an artery for like a couple seconds. And it's, and it's a mess. And then all of a sudden, like five seconds later, like it's done and like the scab's already healed. So I don't know if it was one of those deals or if he just hit something really awkward and just like cut and then like enough pressure and just wiping it. It's like, yeah. Remember, he does have the scruff too, so he can hide. It wasn't any noticeable gash. So it's not like anything that really needs stitches. So it wasn't that bad. But yeah, you could tell. He did something to that cheek. Um... So yeah, send there. Uh, Triple H grabs the sledgehammer and he's very gingerly taking his time. Then the lights start to go off. And then Alexa Bliss shows up. The uh, sledgehammer gets gets on fire. Of course, you never see Triple H light the thing because of the camera angle. Again, decent camera work. Still, you know when both hands are low, and all of a sudden he's like, "Huh? Why is this sledgehammer on fire?" And then Alexa Bliss shows up. She has the pain glove and shoots fire from the gloves. The old Kamehameha style. Yeah, Kamehameha. Or uh, Shudokin. 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 A bit like Street Fighter. Uh, Orn gets blinded. And that was end of match. And um, that, I don't know. That was just weird. Um, it wasn't a long raw. It didn't feel long. So it was okay. I'm um, a little bit about this week before I run out of time because I'm almost at my 30, my magical 30 minute mark. Remember, tomorrow is going to be Impact live stream. Wednesday's a review. Thursday, I'm going to do predictions for Impact. Uh, hard to kill. Friday is going to be the typical SmackDown review. Saturday, I don't know. I'm off to a cookout in Jacksonville. So I may or may not be here.